why um um why doesn't Vashti come? Why is the king so upset when she doesn't come? These are like the main questions in the I, parak. I hit the jackpot, right? Well, you you hit the jackpot on Sunday, the mamash. Um, and um, and today and Perak Bet, the main question there, of course, is why Mordechai doesn't tell Esther to go. But the, there's a there's a basic question that stands under that question, or at the basis of that question that we had, why Esther didn't say. There is another question that at first you don't think of it, and we, we raised it last time. And the, the, that question is, did Mordechai and Esther, both one of them, want Esther to be queen or not? She definitely wanted to be queen. She definitely wanted to be queen. Well, was her dream. So, last right, right. I, I, that, 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 we, we ended with that question. What does, what do they want to do? In other words, more, more, she's taken, okay? We say she's taken. So there, no, one, no one seems to say, and I've never seen this anywhere, no one says that someone brought up here, someone, I think Shua was doing it when he was in his mischievous mode, <laughs> saying that, that, that he wanted her to go and join this thing because he went. So, so I've never because seen that. she's a tool. Right, right. I've, so I've never seen that, um, that uh, blatant statement before. Words, and it seems to be, we saw on the Pesukim, it says, Vatilakach. She is taken. It does not seem to, and says it twice, it doesn't seem that she wanted to go there. But the question is, once she is taken, where do we go from here? So if you guys... What? Are we in Bet now? We are in towards the end of Bet already. Based off of what happened, she had no chance to not go and do this. It was a it was a mandate. Everyone had to do. Oh, oh for sure, go. for so sure. She's was wanted that once she's already there, she'll not be one of the numbers. She well, that, that that's what we talked about last week. She'll but I want the, the dummies to be hundred percent. And it's a, it's a possibility. But now I want to open you guys up to the. There's a word plethora, is that a right word? Plethora. plethora. plethora of, of, of commentaries that there are on, um, on, on this question, okay? Did Mordechai want her to go in and not? And once you answer that question, you're going to have to also say the, the one thing he told her to do, which is to not say where she's from, that's going to lead... Th that direction. In other words, if he says, "I don't want her to be queen," then he said, "Or don't say that you're quit that you're for a Jewish, because that will help you not become queen." Or if I say that he wanted her to become queen, he told her not to say that she's Jewish because it will help her to be a queen. Let's take a look. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the one we our own opinion here that we brought up, uh, uh, we talked about last week. Um, nine different opinions, and they they break off into that, those two basic schools of schools of thought. What exactly is going on? So this this the, the first half of our lesson at least is going to be more a commentary, um, um, something we we do often, but never with this many perushim. We're going to see how each one gives us adds a little something to the story. Now the people again, the people who are here, we we cheated last week because Asher just was so uh, 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 direct and hit the, hit the nail on the head that I couldn't stop and say, no, no, we'll talk about it next week. So we did, we raised it already at the end of this year last week. What I think is the, the, the correct reading here, correct, whatever. The way I understand the reading, that's too strong what I said. Uh, no, it's the way I see it. I'm not, I'm not cholik here on all these huge Ravani. Well, Mike, well, we'll see it. We'll see. You'll see at the end. We're going to bring it. Then. Now we're going to bring it. Then. The people who weren't here last week get to be surprised this week. Okay? Sunday. Right. The people who weren't here on Sunday get to be surprised today. Okay? We'll, we'll surprise them together. Okay. So let's, let's see. Uh, um, we have Rashi. Okay? We have Rashi not to reveal it. Okay? He's the only one who was in English. I'm sorry. Everyone else is in Hebrew. I'll read it and translate it. But Rashi goes like this. Not to reveal it. Okay, why did Mordechai say not to say that you are from who, where you're from, your family, your nation? Why? We are in the the the, the second page. Yeah, right here. Yeah, the only only Rashi's in English. Everything else is not. Yeah. By the way, they fooled us. They fooled us. Remember, I was so I was so happy when I said the Malbim is in English on the Megillah and Safaria. It was like only the very beginning was in English. <laughs> Very, very upset. Okay, there's a front, right? So Rashi says not to reveal it. Listen to what he says. So that they should say 
that she was from an ignoble, do you say? Ignoble, ignoble, how do you pronounce that? With the, do you pronounce the ignoble, G? Ignoble, ignoble. Not recognize the word, I'm sorry. It's ignoble. It's like not noble. That's what it means, right? Ignoble, ignoble. Why would you say the G? I don't know, because I don't know how to read English. So, so it was an ignoble family. So there, she was from an ignoble family and dismiss her. But she wasn't. For if they knew that she was the family of King Saul, they would keep her. Exactly. So, so listen, to, listen to Rashi thinking. Rashi is saying... Mordechai doesn't want her to be queen. Why His advice Mordechai? is to say, not to say, because if she said, I am from the house of Shaul, I am from a king, then the king would go, ah. Well, that wasn't the intention. That, well, whoa, 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 one second, one second. You're, you're already, you're already, I know, I know. Forget, uh, Rashi didn't go by us. This is Rashi's reading, okay? Don't, don't get stuck on what we explained before. We'll get to the way we explained it afterwards. One second, Hirsch, I just want to, Rashi, why are we reading Rashi? Why only? Why only? The first Rashi's the first of nine. The first of nine. <laughs> yeah, Rashi's usually the first one, we'll see. Okay, he's the first of nine here. Um, so, okay, so Rashi's statement is very clear. It's, it's, it's a little surprising. In other words, he says, if they would have said that she's Jewish, and from, right? At, at, and Rashi sort of medayik here. He says, right? Not only her nation, but also her birthright. Moladeta, her, where she's from. The where she's from is what Rashi's more main uh, point here. And he says, listen, where she's from is, uh, is a pretty uh, high yichus. How do you say yichus? Uh, heritage. No. Lineage. 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 Uh, yichus is yichus. No, yichus, no, when no, you get shiduchim. And you guys said, ah, oh, he's from a good family. Ah, oh, good family. <laughs> so she's from a really good family. Okay, she's really shaveh. Rashi says, what? Prestige. Uh, prestige. Fam, fam, familial. Familial prestige. So, so she has serious prestige from her family. And Mordechai says, we don't want you to be queen. Don't say where you're from. And then maybe he won't choose you. Probably he won't choose you. And unfortunately, according to Rashi, he's thwarted. In other words, Mordechai loses in this, in this, in this uh, 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 bet. He bet that it would work. And it doesn't work. Or maybe he just wanted Esther to think that he didn't want her to win. But really, he told her to because he wanted her to win, and he was just using that as an excuse to trick her. Okay. Sure, you, you have to write a new perush on the Megillah here. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but said that, I mean, there, uh, that, that could be. You know, he's dividing it between what Esther th what he tells Esther to do and what he really means. So it could be one second, but but just, but just, but just go with this. You know, this can, this is not this is a this is a this is a um, a direction that many mafarshim say. In other words, of course we don't want a good Jewish girl to be married to this goy, this 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 this, this king, this horror, crazy, lustful, bananas king. We don't want it. Thank you. What, what? Good. Okay, Hirsch. That was it for the day. We heard it and we got it. We understood. We thank you for reminding us. But uh, really, uh, who who would want their daughter to marry this guy? Who, really, it's crazy. A, a good Jewish girl like Esther. Come on. <laughs> she's good. She may not. She 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 had maybe connected to the Persian uh, culture, but she's a good girl. Wait, and and come on, get married. Okay. Anyway, that's what more. That, this is Rashi. We hear Rashi. And by the way, by the way, I believe without uh, you guys are already like uh, I, I, I've already uh, convinced you guys. But I believe most of us reading the Megillah the first time. Oh, some of us, not all of us, but reading the Megillah the first time around, they're like, "Yeah, oh my gosh, what marry What's going on here? Get out of there as soon as you can. Everything is forced. Everything you have to. Everything at the end, she flips and she goes, "Okay, now I'm taking control of this. Now I'm gonna grab him. Now I'm gonna." But really, stay as far away from him as you can. That's what Rashi. That's what Rashi's hearing, and Ra this is how Rashi explains it. Rashi says, "Look, this is what he tried to do. He tried to get her out of it, but Hashem, man plans, Hashem laughs." So, the, right, that was better. Sounds better in Yeshi. So, so even Ezra, even Ezra, um, he he comes from a different way. Okay, he comes from a different direction, and he brings like four different options. Okay, and you like you know, have to read it. Well, read them carefully. Okay, so again, I, I also think the the language in this specific one is not necessarily exactly correct in the Ibn Ezra, but we'll we'll read it and see what we can do from him. Okay, so loy gida Esther. What do you mean this language is not correct? I think I think he was a grammar genius. No, 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 no. I think the the 
no. the printout. Uh, yeah, the printout's not correct. <laughs> not him. No, he's, he knew what he was doing. Okay, lo yigide eser ama, shehi Yisraelit. Okay, now he's explaining. He didn't say her nation, which, that she's a Yisraelite, that she's an Israelite. Umo la is her tribe and her family. This was Mordechai's opinion. And one must ask, after we saw that Mordechai was a serious, important man, man, Shea he's like one of the important person, he was brought third as Rubavel, he's like an important guy. Why did he say to Esther she, she shouldn't say her, her nation? Maybe, if she said it, im tegid she migalut yuda, lo yikach if she says, right, if, if, if she says, And I think, I think this is a mistake here. It's, it doesn't make sense. The word lo is incorrect here. It's No, no, no maybe, maybe. But the lo is, it's a, it's a mistake here in, in the Ibn Ezra. I've seen it in another perush also differently. I mean, especially based on what all we've been learning up until now is that Ahasuerus was taking advantage in so many ways. One of being that he's taking all the nobles' daughters. Correct. No. So maybe it would help to be there. Wait, but one second. So that's so the Ibn Ezra seems to have a critique on Mordechai. He's saying to Mordechai, "Why didn't you say? It would have been a good idea to say." And then what would have happened? She, no, she could have been chosen. The, Ibn Ezra's coming the the same exactly what Rashi said. Afuch. He's saying but Rashi he says what he he's critiquing he's critiquing. Mordechai, and Rashi is, is commending Mordechai. And they're both doing the same thing. You know, they didn't they're say... agreeing with Mordechai, but on different points. On different points. Well, here the Ibn Ezra is saying, you should have said, you're, you're a serious guy, Mordechai. Why are you hiding it? Then she may have had a chance. May, that would have been fine. That would have been good. Because she's noble and, and, it's, and she's a good family. Rashi is saying, don't say it. We're more, he's saying, why didn't you say it? And this is the first thing the Ibn Ezra says. So we, we see like... This is, this is like they're directly opposed, di diametrically opposed. They say the same thing, that, that it's good to be, in other words, to be chosen as a queen, it's good to have a strong lineage. But the question only is, do you want to be chosen or not? So, well, Mordechai was correct, according to Rashi, is not saying it because he didn't want her to be chosen. The Yemen says he was wrong because we wanted to be, he should, he should have wanted her to be chosen. Now, just bringing that out, Mordechai wants her to be chosen, already is a whole different play. This is a whole different play. And just start one second. I should just, just start like our play in our understanding. Ibn Ezra is the first one to raise the option that he, he wanted her to be chosen. Okay, that, that's not, I think it's not the common um, kindergarten education. Okay, yes, we wanted her, no, it's so fast. It's a problem. It's all, well, not kosher food. All kinds of problems in the, in the Kavalis. Well, not until but, the Rav starts a kindergarten. What? Once you start a kindergarten, then it'll be the... <laughs> the, uh, right, no. Uh, no, I'm not sure I'm going to teach. I teach. I teach first, second, third grade. I don't think I'm going to teach on this now. <laughs> the the I have. I have. A, I, teach, I teach. I teach a school. I have a school, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not teaching them this stuff. You have to first learn the Megillah on the lower level, and then sort of go jump where we, we've jumped to. I disagree. Little type. The you disagree. The point of uh, Ibn Ezra in in both the ways. One reason. Even if, let's say, Mordecai wanted her to be chosen, it's not a good idea to disclose her identity. Why? Because we know the character of. Uh, well, of you, you, no, no, that's because that's you learned here before. Oh, okay. One second. No, I mean, no, no, I'm serious. I share. No, We're, we don't mix in. We don't know what the Ibn Ezra said about for chapter first one and two until now. Okay. Until right now, we're, on the, we're, we're really like a magnifying glass on just this point. Here, the Ibn Ezra seems to say it would have worked. But, but he goes on. He has like a whole so bunch in of... In Ibn Ezra's narrative or any other narrative, these fit in perfectly. Oh, for sure. No, the, this would work in other ways of reading the Megillah. It doesn't work so well in our way we read, but it works in others. Okay? But now, now he says, He was afraid. Because, and this is, this is Rashi, right? He was, he was afraid if she would have said it, that she would have been chosen. Here he's hinting to Rashi. He says, that, that's a divrei achid. Someone, someone says this, Rashi in this sense, right? And now he goes, Ulefidati. Shekola Yudim, he's saying, now he's saying, what, 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 a better explanation. Kola Yudim nivzim ayu beine amalchut. Halo tire dvar ber shatzar le Daniel. Di min bnei galuta de Yehud. He says, in my opinion, all the Jews were the way 
often Jews are related to. They were despicable. They were the scum of the earth. The scum of the earth. They, didn't like, they didn't like the Jews. Okay? Okay, so if they didn't like the Jews, then why wouldn't you say? Does he, does he want her to be chosen or not, according to that? He says to, to be known as a Jew is not good. Not good in, uh, uh, individual. So does he want her to be chosen or not, Nafisa? No. No, keep quiet. Oh, wait, no, there's a tzad to yes. Yes, a fool. He wants her to be chosen. That's why he tells her to be quiet. That's why he says, don't say you're Jewish. Because once you say you're Jew, you go, eh, hey, what Jew? Oh, yeah, not, can't. again, go back. <laughs> not will say she's kingly. No, no, no. Just to say you're a Jew. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Jew, you're out already. So according to this opinion, this direction in the Ibn Ezra, he goes back to his first one. Oh, she does want to be chosen. But if she would have said she's Jewish, hmm, wouldn't have worked. That would have been bad. It was, you'd be on the on the the X list already, okay? So so the Ibn Ezra is going back and forth here. But now he says Benachon be'enai. But really, what I think is correct, and now he's going to go the other way again. Benachon be'enai ki ra'am mordechai she'amelech lo bikesh lo lo bikesh lakachat bat melech rakayofi levado. He Mordechai saw that the king didn't want a noble. He just wanted someone who's pretty. He didn't care where she's from. Esther was really pretty. She really had a chance. But Mordechai knew that he has a very serious Miss Universe contestant in his house. And and he knew that had no meaning if she's... He wasn't looking for a a bavrit or any other kind of anything. He was just Looking for beauty. One second, one second, one second. One, let's, just, let's just read his thought. Let's just finish up his thought here, okay? Upachad. She said, she may actually win. Esther's that pretty. She can actually win. Ve'imi tagid. She lo tochal pat bag ha-melech. pat bag ha-melech yachichen. Pat bag, I also, I'm not sure if that is a, a, a typo or something, but maybe there's something called a pat bag. It means a, a non-kosher food. The king will force her. If she said, if she starts saying, I, I, I can't eat this food, ki give it. Oh, pot is like a bread. Yeah, yeah, pot, pot is a bag. Bread. Yeah, pot is a bag. Ki imaita givere tuchala stiratzma. He says, he says, why didn't she say, again, you know, he's going back and forth here, he's saying, she, she really had a chance to be chosen. And if she says she's Jewish, she's going to get into all kinds of uh, problems here. You eat my food, don't eat my food, yes, eat my food. No, 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 keep it hidden. What is the Ibn Ezra hinting here? Was she co- keeping kosher or not? No. No, that she isn't. Well, it's not, he wanted to give her the chance to keep kosher. That's what it sounds like. In other words, he's saying if she says it outright, I am Jewish, then everyone's going to start looking at her plate. They're going to start saying, hmm, what is she eating today? Oh, you're not eating this? You are, as often happens, right? Once you know something about someone, you're like, oh, one second. Let me see, right? Someone says he's a vegetarian. Then you go, oh, what's he eating? What's he not eating? <laughs> but, uh, but if he doesn't say anything, you don't really notice. Because I'm, I'm not looking at what pe- other people eat. So he's saying, listen, she's in. Again, this seems to be more on the, on the, on the direction of yes, even though not 100%, because he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna go one more uh, direction. And he's going to say, if she says she's Jewish, she's hurting your chances here. She's hurting her chest. She's, gonna, she's not going to be able to stay Jewish. Now, we're not sure exactly if, the, if that really means if it would help her or not help her become the queen. Just saying it will, it, will, it will be problematic for her. So I'm not quite sure if the Ibn Ezra brings it in, in, in this way or that way. You could, we could argue about this. And then he brings one last opinion. This is like his fourth or fifth one. V'acherim amru, she'yada derech ha here comes the complete religious thing. He had a nevuah. He had a prophecy. Mordechai had a prophecy that she would be the queen. And therefore, does he want her to be queen or not? Yes. Definitely yes. So most of the Ibn Ezra is, is leaning towards yes. We, we, we want her to be queen. For, and then there's different ways of explaining. The last one, I have no way of... Uh, that, that one is like... He doesn't agree with it either. It says, Acherim Omrim, others say, he's not willing to take that, that he had a prophecy. It seems very not part of Megillat Esther that there's prophecies going on here. Okay, let's not, uh, I, I, I'll take this opinion out at the moment. I have nothing, to, I, I don't know how to explain it. But obviously, it sort of makes sense, right? If he had a prophecy that she's going to do it, then of course he's for her. Okay, so. Then he wouldn't have hit her in the first place, though. Why hide her? Maybe only after she was chosen. 
if he pro was given prophecy. He had the prophecy after, after she was so taken. So after she was taken, he had prophecy that she'd be queen. Shut up. Tov. This is Ibn Ezra. So right now we have Ibn Ezra Mul Rashi, let's say Big Adol. Okay, we have Rashi, Ibn Ezra. Rashi said straight out he does not want her to be queen. Ibn Ezra mostly says he doesn't want her to be queen. Okay, now let's go on to the other Perushim. All of them are built on these two opinions. And now they're just, they'll just make it more and more interesting as we go along. Okay, so we have Emmanuel of Rome, who I can't tell you much about, but he's a, uh, one of the Perushim on, on uh, the Megillah. And he says like this. She didn't say her nation. The, the Psukim tell us that Esther, when they would ask her where she's from, right? We, we have to get some practicality here. They asked her where she's from. Remember we talked about this last lesson. You bring out the list. Where are you from? Number 2004. Nationality. 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 Name. Where household. Birth, tell me where. Place of birth. Yeah. This is what we're... Who are, which nation is she from? Who are her, her, her relatives? Who are her household? And who, who were the ones who gave birth to her? She didn't say, because Mordechai told her not to. And he says, We have to ask. Because Mordechai was in, uh, Esther was in Mordechai's house. She was raised by him until she was taken to the king. And why does she just say that she's an orphan? She doesn't know. It's he's about to say. That's what, because, like, that's what he's about. Don't know who he's about to say that. Is the thing. I think this is what he's about she's to say. Rational, uh, he can like literally get away with that. And she's not wrong. She actually doesn't have any she, parents this, this, alive. And she can just say, I don't know because my parents are dead. I, I believe this is what he's going to say now. If he doesn't say it, someone else is going to say it in a minute. So, as or just as he said. Okay? That's when we learned last lesson. We said that's why it says that. Now, this is, that's the key. That's why Mordechai can use this, this card. But let's, let's go on. So, again, I'm sorry. And he says, Mordechai was in Shushan. Now, it's, how could she really hide her lineage? She grew up in his house. And if you will tell me, what do I care? How would people know where she... Mordechai is in Shushan Abira, who is in the capital city. People know. This is not... He's not, like, coming from the middle of nowhere. Okay? This is a, uh, all this is a question. It's Ira Malchut. It's the city of the capital. How could they have not known her that she was taken from Mordechai's house? Why did they even have to ask her, her nation and her birthright? And in, we may say, it can be say, said, he gives one option, that when all the girls were taken, Mordechai smuggled her out of her house, or maybe even out of the city. And when she was taken, she was taken from a place that they couldn't know where she's from. And that's why they didn't know, and they would ask her. And Mordechai told her, that she shouldn't say her nation and her, her, her lineage, he thought, I will try to keep her away from the king as much as I can, in all the ways I can, so that she won't be taken. And if there is a godly reason that she is taken at the end of the days, it's good that she doesn't say where she's from, because the king will not appreciate a Jew. Where do we hear that? Ibn Ezra brought that one, right? That being Jewish is not a, a very good thing. So though? Now he says, okay, so there it sounds like, so what does Mordechai want or not want? Again, he said, he tried to keep her away. He smuggled her out. He wanted her out of the way so they don't take her. Everyone knew she's pretty, but we want her out. If she's taken, if she's taken, don't say you're Jewish. Just don't say you're Jewish because that will hurt your chances. That will hurt your chances. And we want a chance. Because of the pers Persian persecution of Jews? Right. Because the Persians didn't appreciate Jews. Right. Exactly right. Okay. Being, being a Jew was not a good thing. So most of the commentators agree that she should not have to, uh, revealed her uh, heritage? That, that it says in the Psukim. That, that there's, there, there's, there's no question about that. The question is, what is the point of not revealing your heritage? Is the point so that you won't be chosen or that you will be chosen? So here, Rabbi Manuel Mirom says that it shows that she will be chosen. Okay, that's what he told her. Again, he didn't want her to be chosen. He tried to do everything so that she won't be taken. Once she was taken, he says, maybe this is from God. This must be from God. And therefore, once you're in, don't say who you're from because they don't like Jews. Yeah. Well, it's both because... Uh... They, they don't want Jews, right? So maybe Ahasuerus himself doesn't like Jews either. Correct. Um, but also, going through the whole administration process, 
And then they'll think, you know, how can we possibly display some absolute nobody to the king? You know, I wouldn't want to be the person who's bringing uh, forth any randomer for the king's court. So, so it would be a problem just to not fact, say. It would have been even a problem for them to Oh, to even bring, bring uh, interesting, okay, interesting. So you're, you're continuing, you're saying if she had no, no nationality, just a commoner, he wouldn't go. That's even Ezra related to that, right? When he said that the king didn't care about anything, only beauty. Yeah. But again, we're like putting all these pieces together. You could, you could, you could put, put this puzzle together in many different ways. And so you say this, then that leads to this. You say this, it leads to this. I think mean, Mordecai was probably considering both. Both. Yeah, that's, hopefully she won't get through the first process. If she does get through the first process, she won't get stuck in the middle. Right. That's what it seems to say here. That's what he seems to be saying here. But let's go on. Just quickly, setting aside the, all the processes to get to the king himself, if he doesn't care, ultimately, if you're, if, if it's all about beauty, regardless of if you if you if you say you're Jewish or not, it doesn't make a difference. No. It's, yeah. It's but there, there's nationalities and there's Jews. Exactly. He's looking for the beauty. Uh, I, I, the beauty overrides the fact that he's may, may, Maybe, maybe. Because he's clearly may, very obsessed no. with the... With the with maybe, the you're right. I mean, it's a question. Uh, maybe. But you know... Here he can make an exception. Some, somehow Jews always get the exception. Uh, so that's what, that's what seems to be happening here. In other words, Mordecai's thinking is he's, he's, he's afraid that the Jew part will get in front of, of her, her chances. Okay? Now he adds, Mitzurah Felze, there's another issue happening there, that... For her to be able to keep the Torah secretly, and so she won't eat non-kosher food and keep Shabbos, and people won't feel that she's uh, uh, be a practicing Jew, because if it comes out to light, if it comes to light, the king will kill her or force her. And we knew that Mordechai is one of the great, great people of Israel, as we said before. Um, he mentions here, and, and when he saw that the temple wasn't built, he came back to try to move that ahead that we've talked about in the past. Um, this says, so again, another reason why you don't say, I'll leave the end, even though the end is interesting. But he says, another reason why not to tell, because again, because this way she'll be able to practice secretly. If, she, if she's a known Jew, there is a possibility that the king will force her to be over on the mitzvot. But this, he says, it's another issue. It's another issue. Another reason why not to tell. If you, if you come out and say, I'm a Jew? Well, let's see. Just like who's gonna, what's going to happen to someone who does that? Who does that? Mordechai. Right? Mordechai doesn't bow down. I'll just remind you guys, this is, next, this is the next chapter. Mordechai doesn't bow down. Haman doesn't get that at first. He doesn't see him. We always see, like, Mordechai standing there in front of him, you know, and like, the spotlight's on the two of them, and he's not bowing down. No, no, no. It's like, they say, they start, they ask him, why are you bowing down? And then he says, I'm Jewish. And then they go to Haman and they say, you know, there's this guy who's not bowing down. He's Jewish. It, it, it seems to me that's where it comes from. Now, that's the thing. Like, Mordechai wasn't uh, such an important position in the government that he make, meets Haman every day. He's, you know, on the side and he wasn't bowing down. Okay. Um, so once you become, once your Jewishness is, is proclaimed, you're in, you're in danger. You're in danger, and that's what he doesn't want to happen. Okay, but again, it's not saying who I am is a positive statement. Now, don't say who you are so that you can live a Jew Jewish life, possibly be chosen by the king. So he's continuing the Ibn Ezra's footsteps. Let's go on to Yosef Ibn Yahya. Okay? Vayan ki hu tziva lea levilti egid lezulati et amavet morata. He told her not to tell where she's from. Therefore, Esther didn't say, even to the king. And this was from Mordechai's um, wisdom. Ki lehakirot melech he knew the king is a sona Israel. He is in a real anti-Semite. And also not the greatest uh, 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 midot. He doesn't have the greatest uh, personality traits either. He's an angry, he gets angry all the time. And he said, it's better if we don't know that she's from Israel. So that Esther will always be able to help her people um, under the, uh, secretly, 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 secretly. In other words, if he knows she's Jewish, that's going to mess everything up. But if he doesn't know, then she can secretly, she could be there in an important position of power and secretly help her people get there. Okay? 
Lazor kacha bakiram, he wouldn't be able to do it when she's Jewish. Why? Because they would say, oh, she's helping her people. In other words, she's biased. She has a connection to them. Ve'iduta alem hu pasul. He uses a halachic term. Uh, you're not a krovim aren't allowed to be um, edim. People who are uh, connected by blood aren't allowed to be witnesses. And he says, and they would say, oh, you only want to help the Jews because you're Jewish. You're only, and he's saying, there's a wisdom in her keeping it secret and they're being able to use much more subtle ways of helping the Jews. Because, as it really happens, right? Uh, after what happens with Haman, right? She actually does that. That's exactly what happens. So again, where are we going? Yes, no? Yes. yes. Ibn right, Ibn Ezra. Yes. Continuing Ibn Ezra's Shita. We want to not tell, but he's bringing another aspect. Does why not tell? Because she could secretly help her people. If it was in the, uh, uh, she was the Jewish queen, you don't have as much power. And that's a very interesting outlook. I'm just saying, it's an interesting outlook to say that. Right? One second, I'll just... Because it could go either way, sort of, right? Say that I'm Jewish, maybe it would bring uh, more power for the, for the Jews. But he says, what's, what's the key? He says, the king's an anti-Semite. That's a, 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 part, a data piece that we didn't know until now. We don't know the king's anti-Semite. We don't know anything about his relation to the Jews. We have the Midrashim, right, that he took out the Kohen Gadol. We, we have stuff. But in the Pshat, we, he doesn't know. Who knows if he knows, knows what the Jews are, Bichlal? If he knows who the Jews are, Bichlal? Yeah, well, Haman has to tell him. Uh, maybe. He doesn't even say that. But we'll right, wait, so wait. There are these people. Ah, Mefuzal. Ah, Mefuzal. But does he say which people they are? No. No. The fact that... We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We, he may not even say who they are. But, but at the moment, the, the, uh, Rabbi Yosef Ibn Yachia says, this is, the, this is the, the wisdom of not saying who you are. You'll be able to help down the road. Yeah, I, I clarified. Okay, great. Now then, Malbim. Okay, Malbim is going to give us, uh, uh, he's going to join Rashi's, join the, 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 the ranks of Rashi, okay? Lohi Gida. Now... They say, okay, after more, after he says at first you tried a million, the Malbim has like nine different acts that Mordechai does so that she's not taken. Okay, he like tries to do a million things, but then she gets taken. Okay, now she's taken. After he told her, um, after they told her, we want you to be married, we want you to be queen, we wanna, we, we, we're, we're bringing you closer and closer. She didn't say where she's from. Because, and this is exactly what one of you said here, I forgot who just said this, he thought that the king would kick her out of his house. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't take an Asufi Minashuk. Who said this here? I think that was Yossi. Yossi? Yeah. You said that he wouldn't take her to take just a simple person? Yeah. Malbim's with you. Okay, the Malbim says, this was a derech that, that she wouldn't make that, she wouldn't pass yeah. through. Okay. So who do, what does he want to do at the end? What's the, 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 right, the, the idea of this Eitzah is? With Ibn Ezra. No, with Rashi. He said, let's not say who she is, so they'll think she's a simple woman, and the king will kick her out. That's what he wants to happen. That's like the final... No, Rashi said, even the Malbim, you don't have the whole thing, the Malbim brings many, many ways, Mordechai tried for her not to be queen, many, many, many ways. Once she was taken, this is the last hope. I'm going to say she's a nobody... And maybe he'll throw her out because he only accepts nobility. Okay? It's biduka fuk, what we're going to say, right? He knows. Are you saying that Mordechai, when she finally got taken to the palace, to the to the court for women, um, it wasn't because Mordechai finally decided to, you know, give up hiding her. No. Because, you know, he could no longer hide her. Exactly. Oh, that's what the Malvin says for sure. Mom says he really, really tried very hard for her not to come. Many, many different ways, and then she's taken. Now everybody's still attempting at least get her thrown out. At least not... Now, I, I want to just point out, it's an important thing, the Malbim is the only perush I've ever seen, who says, and Apostle will, we'll see in the continuation of the lesson, because it's important for both ways of reading, he says that the king sent the girls home at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, the rabbi mentioned this in the first class. Right, that, 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 that's not what happens. But the Malbim Shita, I've never seen anyone else say this, he says they, he sent them home. So how is this? How, how is this uh, no, but I'm just going to say, so Mordechai is... It's not a stira. Oh, so is it a stira between what we say and what the Malbim says? Yeah. Of all the time. We're a stira, a stira, I start a stira on Rashi says, it, whatever. Yeah, we're going on our own path here. Um, but um, 
but but the Malbim, that fits into what he's saying here. Now there's a Malbim's option of him throwing her out because she's a nobody. That's an actual thing that could happen, as it will happen later. Or after he chooses Esther, he's going to send everyone else home. Unfortunately for the Malbim, he chose Esther, and not everyone else, right? But, but if he's really trying for her not to be chosen, he doesn't want Esther to be chosen. And again, really when you think of it, It's not so pashut, right? If it was your daughter, I mean, well, it's not so pashut. Or your 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 uh, adopted daughter, or or anyone you know, <laughs> what? Or, or, or wife, according to Chazal, right? It's not. It's not so pashut. In other words, the fact that she's in. So again, part of our understanding here's another piece of the puzzle. Were they going to be let out or not? So if they were going to be let out, like the Malbim says soon later, then it, he reads backwards. There's a chance of her getting out. But if we read and say that all the girls are there, once you're there, the king, you're there for life, then it's a different kind of thinking. It's a different kind of thinking. Okay, now you're there for life. Well, what's, how do we salvage this situation? So again, another piece of the puzzle that, that, that continues and, and pushes is, I, I'm, I'm sorry if this is a little uh, uh, repetitive. I just, I love it. I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm just having you guys part of this. And just seeing like all, the, all these chachamim, all these great wise men, they were all asking this question. They're all reading the psukim and they're saying, what is going on here? Why not say? It doesn't say why. He's, it doesn't say. Now, there's no place that, and Mordechai said not to say because. There's no because. We don't know. We're going to have to, in through everything we know about the Megillah up till now, we're going to try to figure it out. And each one of them figures out a little different than the other one. Everyone, no, no one we've read here said the exact same thing. Everyone had a little, little twist. Some say, the, the, again, the general direction, Rashi, Malbim, in one general, general direction, Ibn Ezra, Yosef Ibn Yechia, uh, Emmanuel Nirom, all another direction. So let's go. The, the, the Malbim could be working off of what happened as a result of her being chosen. Because clearly, after she was chosen by Akashverosh, Akashverosh himself had certain changes internally. Like, you know, all of a sudden now he cares for Jewish people because his wife is Jewish. And it's just one thing. It's like, perhaps Ahasuerus never had any intention of letting the woman go. But once he had found his woman, and once he had become, you know, a slightly better person, you know, he starts caring about someone else other than himself, now all of a sudden perhaps he doesn't mind letting them go back. You're a romantic at heart. Ah. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe. I can say maybe. Uh, I don't think this is Ahasuerus' is, uh Personal, persona change here. Even though we did say it, it said Vayavea, right? When we last lesson we talked about how he loves her. And that's a, a completely out, not characteristic statement. Outlandish. It's not characteristic of Achashverosh or anyone else it's in the Megillah. Or anyone else in the Tanakh. Right, very, very rare in the Tanakh. We talked, we said Rivka, uh, Yitzchak loves Rivka. It's the first yeah. time it's mentioned. Hashem loves you know, us. And Hashem loves us. But yes. even Ava. Even I just. I'm just saying, even the word ava is a, a, a word that rarely appears in the Sefer Devarim, where in Sefer Devarim it comes out very, 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 uh, very much. But let's, let's, let's go on. Okay. Um, let's, um, let's go on to the Megillat Starim. Again, the same quote. So, yeah, Megillat Starim. It's like the Megillah has his secrets. So that's, the, that's what the Perush is called. He says... Niba ve'eno yodea ma niba. Mordechai prophesied and he didn't know what he prophesied. Now he's saying, he gave this statement that she shouldn't say without really understanding the full, the full power of that statement. Like Abraham with, um, when he goes to slaughter Yitzhak, he says, we'll be back. Good. Yafe. Nachon. Yafe. Meule. Nibave no yadeamani. Very good. That's a, it's a good statement. Right? And he said something, but he didn't even understand himself. How, how powerful the words he said. And what? That no one should know that she's from Jewish because Imlochen, Haman wouldn't have done what he does and they wouldn't have been sold. You know, he's saying, Mordechai gave this Eitzah, but Mordechai didn't really understand the full um, impact of his words. The, his words really led to the Jews being saved at the end. Said them. So, so, that, that, that statement I, is, is neither here night nor here nor there. In other words, it's there and it's here. It's not the Ibn Ezra, it's not Rashi. It's sort of saying Mordechai gave this idea, sort of like threw it out. 
um, and didn't really understand the full thing. I, I have a harder time with this, this Perush, even though it's true. He couldn't really have known. Hashem would have made another way, but... Yeah. Nishtahin and Nishtahin. That's what it seems to be. It's, it's, you know what? Yeah, if it, it's yeah, probably better. Probably better that they don't know. <laughs> Maybe in a sense, right? So yeah, you know, just the basic Jewish move is, you know, when you go to take your keep off. Anyone have that ever happen anywhere? Yeah. No, 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 exactly. It happens all the time in the Chutz Laaretz. All the time. People take their keep off. In Chutz Laaretz, a year after high school, I started going to the the Beit Knesset regularly every Shabbat, and I would only wear in the services. Now, since I've been here, I've been wearing all day, every day, and I don't plan to never change that for the rest. Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem. No, I'm just saying there are places in all over the non-Israel world, pretty much, that it is very, very common that you say, you know what, why, why, why make it a point? Why make it an issue? So that's carry, sort of... Carry a gun. What? Carry a gun. Can still carry. Well, what does that have to do? I think New York is still the best gun. No, but in France, <laughs> in France, I think even when you have a discussion <laughs> whether the rabbinim is saying whether you can or can't. Right. Yeah, they know it's, it's, it's dangerous. Sometimes it's from danger, and sometimes it's culture. You know, I want to be part of the culture, and it's not a danger per se. You're Jewish at home. When you leave the home? Exactly. If you want to be part of what's going on, you stop. So the Megillah Tzarim may have like a little bit of that. Listen. Uh, it's just listen, better, you, just uh, better not to be. Uh, so let's go on. We have we have uh, three more to go, and then come back to what we said. I mean, we discussed that Mordechai and Esther they were Jewish at home, right? Can 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 can. They might have worn the garbs outside of the house. Right, had the sayas there. Yeah, we have switch with the door open. Chad Mashmait. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. I mean, we could say otherwise, but I don't find myself the coming. the thing, and he wasn't found favor among the majority of the rabbis, right? Right, we, we're very good. Yeah, that one. That's, you know? Can, 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 can. He, it's, he's endangering himself. So, let's go on. The Ralbag. Come on. Let's go. The Ralbag. Mordechai Tziva Le Asherot Tagi. Did Meki Mordechai Ra'ah. Shehi Tiyeh Malka Tachat Vashti. Mordechai saw. The, 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 the Ralbag is very straight out. He saw, he, he, he envisioned, he understood that she's going to be queen, that she could be queen. And because he saw that she may be the key to getting good things for Israel in the future, he told her, don't say what nation you are. So that he wouldn't leave her because she is a... Uh, a Jewess, uh, a, a, a lowly nation in the empire. Now here's a, a, just a, just a, a little bit of a difference. Am Shafal Gole Ben Haumot, a lowly nation who is who is in exile in all the nations. Does it to not have a foundation? To not have your own home state? The Ralbag is is hitting to nationality really, not only Jewish but an actual state. But if you, I know you're Jewish, but to to be a nationality, not in a nation, what in the world is that? Who's going to use this one? Of course, Haman. That's Haman's going to use that one. Okay. Oh yeah, a nation, ben Kola. a nation from a nation. Uh, uh, that's about Egypt. But well, one second, let's, let's, yeah, right, I understood, yeah. So what about, but here I'm, I'm uh, the Ralbag is saying, the Ralbag is saying, of course he wanted her to be chosen. Oh, for sure. He saw she would be chosen and he knew that she could bring good things. Now, the Ralbag is the closest one to what we're going to say. Okay, he's the closest one to say it straight out, but he was afraid that if he found out she was Jewish, it would hurt her chances. But not on the usual Jewish problem, as others, that he's not, and like, like the Yosef Ibn Yechia said, Achashverosh was a Sone Israel. It's not a personal against Jews. It's saying, you know what? Her nation is not, is not a real nation. Now, I don't have anything specific against Jews, but the nation is not a good nation. I don't, I don't want that. It doesn't befit a king. It doesn't befit a king. So, um, I, th- I think maybe we'll stop here, just because uh, just, just, yeah. just we've been going too many. Um, I just want to see if, if there's something really important here. Highly contested, uh, we you know, I'm sorry, we have to read the next two. They're, they're important. Both of them are important. What, the Ben Yehoya brings what Ezra, is gonna, what Ezra said about explaining why 
it's important why she, how she could get out of it. And the Yesh Elohim says something also important. So let's take a look. Sorry. When he saw that they took her, he told her not to say. Why? Because if she said that she's Jewish, all the girls. This is an interesting place. It's you know, it's like a, a movie, right? The movie of the the dorms, the British dorms, right? All the British dorms where they they're really mean to each other. Right. Right, I, I believe, right? I'm, I haven't seen that many of them, but I think, you know, there's, you know, and they're in the dorm, you're, you're like this, you're like this, and you get it. So this, this poor girl, she's in the dorm with hundreds of other girls. Yeah, now, until she gets, they'll make fun of her, and they'll hurt her, and then she'll get so sad and so depressed, she won't eat, and she won't drink, and she'll stay thin and with no power, and when it's time to go to the king, he'll throw her out. And then, and here he adds the point that we said, and then she'll stay in his harem forever. Yes. And then she'll stay in his harem forever. She won't have the chance of being a queen. She'll be a maid servant to the, the eventual queen. He chose the least of the evils. It is better for her to be queen than to stay as a maidservant in the harem. He's, he says it straight out. In other words, he says here, you know what? What, are my, what we call the sum zero game. She's either a queen or nothing. She's not coming back as opposed to the Malbim. That there's a chance that she'll return. There's no chance here. Listen, when you have to make a choice, this is the choice. So don't say you're Jewish. Not because of the king and not because of, because of the girls. Because the girls there will make her life hell. If she finds these, they're anti-Semites. I don't know about the king, but they're anti-Semites. She'll have a lot of trouble there. So that's why she shouldn't say. Okay? But wouldn't that make it worse, though, is the thing? Like, if, they, if she were to tell the girls that she's anti-Semite, when they actually become queen, when they actually make her life... Be one second, one second, one second. So he says, also Hashem in his great chesed, the last line here, they didn't ask. There's a famous Chazal that says every person who saw her thought she was from his nation. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting. I, I don't know exactly why, but it's an interesting statement. I think it's more from what we talked about Esther being someone who always gives every, her chen, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked about last lesson. But, um, but, but that means that's why they didn't ask her either. That's why they weren't afraid of her. That's why she, she wasn't a threat to them. She was always, oh, so if it's not me, it's, le it's at least you, right? You have that. It's like, right? I just was reading something about baseball. And so, you know, the, you know, the, the guy, he's an Indian fan. And he, I'm sorry, this just doesn't mean anything to people who don't know baseball. But for people who know baseball, the guy's an Indian fan. He hates, hates the Yankees. But when they get to the World Series, of course you want the Yankees to win because they're from the American League. And other, yeah, they're, they're, for my, they're my people. So, I'm sorry, for people who don't know what I was talking about, it doesn't matter. But, um, <laughs> but, 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 but one second, one second. But he's saying, oh, no. so, when, so each person saw her as from her nation, it, it made, it, it was a nace, a miracle that Hashem did. So they didn't really push the point. Okay, so that's the Yesh Elohim. The Ben Yoyada Ezra says what you said. Okay, look what he says. Um, so again, I'll, I'll, two lines from the beginning of the Ben, ben Yoyada, the Ben Ishchai, says like this. Nir Ali, it seems to me, they knew, of course, that she was raised in Mordechai's house. Remember the one the first people read, brought this up in the past. Like, how do they not know where she's from? She was born in Mordechai's house. So what did he say? You guys remember? That he shipped her out of town. Right, he shipped her out of town, and then she was caught from who knows where, and then they didn't know she was Mordechai. He says, no, of course they knew she was Mordechai's house. But they, they said she was a orphan. In a sufit minashuk, she was taken from the, 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 the shuk. They found her in the shuk, in the whatever. She lakhaktana velo noda me'eze umahi. And no one knows who she's from. In other words, it's true, I grew up in Mordechai's house. But I may not be from Mordechai. I may be an orphan. A different nationality, a different whatever. But right, right, a different pedigree. That's why it's worth. So the Ibn Ezra brings something we talked about last lesson also. That point of that's why, as when we read it, as, as the reading I offered, was that the Megillah says um, that, uh, that she's an orphan. And, she, and he says it twice. Because it's a really important point. It's the way that Mordechai's trick can work. Otherwise it wouldn't work. 
Who was to say, I don't, I don't know. We know you're from Mordechai's house. Mordechai walks outside, right? And he's always asking what's going on with Esther. There's clearly a connection between them, but it's one of just help and not actual birth because we don't know where she's from. She's in the Sufit Minashuk. She is collected from the outside. Tov. Nine different opinions. Each one adds something little to the story. Let's go back to what uh, our... Uh, what Asha brought up last lesson, the idea that, that I, I think is, uh, I think that fits better into the whole Mailach that we've had until now. And that is, I'll remind everyone, or the people who weren't here, I'll tell them, that Mordechai understands the king very deeply. Very deeply. And he understands that everything that is happening now is an attempt to restore the king's ego, who was almost lost control, right? Remember we talked, Achashverosh is control. He almost lost control with Vashti. So each girl who comes, the real key to winning the king, we said is powerlessness, right? That's the key. The more power you have, the less chance you have of being chosen. And that's the key. Mordechai says, don't say where you're from because the less power you have, the less people you represent, the less people who know who you are, dafka, the more chance. It's not exactly like the Ibn says, Ibn Ezra says, right, the Ibn says he doesn't care what nation they're from. No, it's not that he doesn't care which nation, he deeply cares which nation he's from. It's exactly a fuch. It's what the Ibn Ezra says, but a fuch. He deeply cares. The more powerful your nation is, the less chance you have of being chosen. How do we explain that with the idea that they want to chose, to choose noble women on purpose? What we talked, we were in the lesson, we said, yeah. hold them as a hostage. In other words, there's, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a play here that he's going to find someone in, within all these girls. He's going to find and hold, and hold them hostage, all the, as many as he can. So he's, he's going to have one queen. What are you gonna, there's going to be a queen, right? We said that that's a, that's a basic. There's going to be a queen. But, that, but if we go with that idea, he could be dumb. Take the noble ones and take the prettiest of the non-noble. He could. They may not have raised the possibility that it would be a non-noble. And the, that, that wasn't, it wasn't like we talked about the rich equaled high, high birth. You know, it's very hard. Was, he's not going to give up on pretty, right? We have to remember that. That's, that's going to happen. So you're already in the realm of power. But within the realm of power, and Mordechai, and she's taken from Shushana Bira, she is in the aristoc aristocrat. Aristocratic. Thank you. But she's taken. And, but at, out of everyone else, she is the least powerful of all. And that's why she's chosen. I think, I, I think this, is, this is why. In other words, and this is Mordechai's genius. And it's important to understand his genius that he really understands the king. He gets him more than almost anyone else does. Mordechai understands his need for power, and this is the key. So, let's go on in the Megillah. Um, everyone could open up the Megillah, now that we should uh, finish with the commentaries for now. Let's take a look at the very end of the chapter, and we'll see something very important. Okay, we, we, we hinted to it already when we were reading, uh, when we said the Malbim's opinion of whether he let the girls go or not. But look at chapter um, 2. Pasuk Yudchet. Okay, so so he chose he chooses Esther. I, I just remember, so for people who weren't here last lesson, it's important to understand Esther's personality trait is very important to understand. Her personality trait is one that pleases others. She makes others feel good about themselves. This is her personality trait. It's brought with Haggai. She says to Haggai, "Whatever you say, Haggai." She makes people feel good. I will say in a, 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 an another level, I believe in the relationship between men and women, it is one of the major needs of a man to have the woman he loves make him feel good about himself. It may be the most one of the most important things that happen in the interaction between them. The it's definitely it's definitely also oh, the cook so well. it's oh, also you're so pretty you're so that for sure. But I'm saying it's a deeper level than that. It's not just compliments. It's you you put right, Mamash. You feel when your wife appreciates you. It is a huge huge thing. And of course, it goes the other way too. Okay, but it's it's very important. The king had all these people who were, in a sense, using him to become queen. 
He's the. I want to be queen using through him, him, through him, right. I want to, I'm going to be queen. They, they were coming not to please the king, not to be for the king. They're coming to, to, to move their own, own agendas ahead, to their nation, their family, whatever it is. Esther doesn't want to be there. Isn't so interested in, she's not playing the game. And she comes to the king as a person and she submits to him. But not submits with all the, the, the dreams and the hopes of X or Y. At least she doesn't present it. Um, she seems just to be there for him. And, and there's something that's just mind-boggling for the king. Because he's never met anyone like this before. He's never met anyone like this, probably ever. Everyone always wants things from him. Everyone always trying to pull him in any, all the different ways. And he's, and Esther sort of is, you know, just saying what, what you need, what you say. She finds favor in all who looked at her. And the way you find favor, the real way you find favor, is to be for the other person. We talked about this last lesson. Okay, just, it's just important to understand who Esther is, okay, for but people who weren't here. I mentioned this two classes ago. That a great incident to marriage is that you should notice that there's always this underlying push and pull. I said there's, power. there's, I said that for sure. There's definitely power is happening. It's, it's, it's something who that is push, who is well, like, it's always that there. Power for the good, or is that, is that or is that power has to, or that power has to be when it's no a fool. It's, it's there. When it's, you, it's, when, how do you have to be with I believe it's something that has to be recognized and used, and you could use it. How exactly do you use it? I have to think exactly. I, I, I can't. I'm, I don't want to answer you like this. It's a good question. I'll think of, of how I think it's it's okay. portrayed. I have to think about my marriage and how it how it's worked it's out and other others, but um, but it's it's there. In other words, don't let's not be naive. Okay, there is a, an amount who does what, who who leads, who follows. It's all definitely something. As in all politics, in all politics, not in a bad mood. In 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 the relationships between people. Everything is politics in that sense. There's always a relationship between people, and there's always questions going on. Always, no matter. And, and from individual, from a chevruta, learning in yeshiva to a nation, from there and on, and then from a household and from parents and ch children, there's always these questions going on. Don't be naive to think everything is, in, in a sense, is like a la la land. This is the world we live in. It's the way Hashem made the world, and it obviously can be used as, as Nisim's asking to, to make good things happen. But it's it's something that has to be thought about. So, let's get back to the Megillah, chapter uh, verse eighteen. Vayas Hamelech Mishte Gadol Lechol Sarav Avadav Et Mishte Esther. Vanachal Medinot Asav Eitel Maset Kiad Hamelech. So he makes a big, big party as he wants to do. Mishte Gadol, another Mishte. Everything in the Megillah is around the Mishteim. We talked about this in in Nehemia, right? How being the cup bearer of the king means you're privy to every important thing that happens. So everything, just uh, they're Persians. Every important event is, uh, there is a, a party. There are 10 mishtim in the Megillah, and every important event happens around them. So this is another important event happening. Esther is taken as a queen. Um, I just remind you guys that we saw this has happened in the seventh year. It's important to remember, just the jump of time. The party started in the third, the, the party in, in, in chapter one was the third year, half a year. We're three and a half years later, the seventh year of Tevet. Okay, whatever, three and a half years, four years later, um, we are, uh, that's where we jumped. Now, what happened in all those years in the middle? I remind you guys. Uh, the, was subsided and they so remember the king is bringing a girl to his house, to his, to, to his uh, room every night. This is what's happening, night after night after night. And then he finds Esther. What do we assume is going to happen? That's it, right? The, the whole purpose of the whole way, well, the whole purpose of this event of bringing in the young girls was to find the queen. He found the queen. That's why the next pasuk is going to be really, 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 really surprising. Okay, but let's just. I'm going to read again. So he makes a big party, and in his party he does hanachot la medinot asa. In other words, he lowers taxes, all in the name of Esther, and he gives presents. He gives out presents. Yeah, but isn't that okay. because he doesn't Hot know break. where she's from and he wants to find favor in her eyes, therefore he's lowering the taxes of, of at least no. one of them has to be her. So, so that the uh, Chazal say like you're saying, Shua, Chazal say like you, this is an attempt, Chazal say it's an attempt to find out what's going on. We know he, He's so, uh, the mystery, what we said, the mystique, right? He so wants to know where she's from. He's trying to convince her to tell her. And so he like 
sends out uh, lower taxes, sends out gifts. He's trying to, to shooting in all directions. What? It's also compensation for keeping all their dollars. Possibly, possibly. I think morally it seems to be, I want everyone to love my queen. The pshat is I want everyone to love my queen, so I'm giving you a hanacha, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm lowering taxes and saying it's from the queen. He's taken a queen who's of no nobility, so how do you get the, the public's favor? You, you know what taxes. Right, oh, that's one way. Uh, good, it's, a good, it's a good point. And also what Chazal said, that everyone thought she's from them. She may be from them. You know, she, 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 she could be. No one really knows who she's from. It's very interesting. Right? I'm sure that the tabloids were full. I mean, like all the... The first spine. The, all the things, right? All the... the, the no, and you're like the, the yellow... What's it called? The, the Tehubonim, it's called. They're like the yellow newspapers. What yeah, are those called? Yellow pages? No, no. Like the uh, lower the newspapers. Tabloids. The tabloids. The tabloids. They're all like everyone's mystery queen. Who is she? Does everyone know? Who knows this girl? Who, well, everyone's trying to find out. No one knows. You know, right, she, right. Well, no one knows who she's from. Okay? Now we have a pasuk which is unbelievable. Ubi kabetz bitulot shenit. Umordechai yoshev b'shar melech. When they also continued, I'll say, continued to bring young women, Mordechai was in Shara Melech. And Esther Magedet Moladeta Vetama, the next Pasuk, Esther continued to not say her nation as Mordechai commanded her. And what Mordechai said to her, she continued to do as she was when she was under his auspices. So we're going to write to that in a second. Just before we, we're going to see Pasuk Yutet. Verse Yutet. When the, the young girls were again collected. How, how is it translated by you guys? Uh, we're gathered together the second time. The second time. And we're like, one second. The one second. The whole purpose of gathering maidens was to find the queen. It's over. No. What in the world are you doing? Why is this happening again? Uh, Why is it happening again? This is like a, this is a huge question. So the Malbim here says, he gathered them to set them free. Now that he has a queen, he gathered them uh, to set them free. This is logic. Okay? So that, that fits, well, that's what he said. That's what I said when we learned the Malbim of this passage. That's what he says. So it's a nice statement. He's the only one who says this. <laughs> the, the other statement, and I think is more powerful here, is the king says to Esther, what does he say to her? You should know, I chose you as a queen. There are many others here. There are many other women here. I'm continuing. Maybe even I'll find someone better than you. Huh. The huh. king. Is a what? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, he's not. He, he's, a he's a maneuver. No, but one second. I'm, I'm saying the king doesn't want even becoming queen to be a power for her. He says, "I have the ability to knock you off here. I'm not done. You should know there are others." There are maybe one night suddenly I'll go, wow, this is the one. Maybe. Wow. It's continuing. And that's how he takes her and reduces her to nothing. And, and, and that explains why, what does she say? Remember when Mordechai tells her to go see the queen, the king, what does she say? What does she say? I haven't seen the king in uh, 30. 30 days. <laughs> it's good, but it's true. But the, listen, what, what you, we, we sort of read that like, okay. She hasn't seen him. What's he been doing? He has not been off been having yeah, relations, it's a, okay? It's a, it's a, no, Rabbi, it's a woman detox. Well, yeah, woman. No, it was not a woman detox, okay? <laughs> it was a Esther detox. And what does that say? What does that say to Esther? What does that mean to her? This is, the king is holding her always. Don't think you are Vashti, right? This is, this is the, the trauma. Don't think that I made you queen makes you suddenly a queen. You're a queen because I made you a queen. If I made you a queen, I could not make you a queen. Not like Vashti had her own power. You are mine. That's what, you're a queen. But you're mine. But as a, I think this is why the verse comes this way, as a, as a, as a nigud, um, Good. As a counter to that, in the same part, look at Pasuk Yutet. It's a fascinating Pasuk. Chazal asked this question. How does this Pasuk work? What's the connection between two parts of this Pasuk? What does this mean? Why is it brought? So Chazal say that the king wanted to know, he asked Mordechai, 
How do I tell, as an advisor, not because she's Esther's thing, how do I get her to tell me what's, to, to tell me where she's from? And he, and he gives them the, uh, what's on it? It's, it's, it's an interesting kivun chazal, right? I'm going in a different, a different way. I think it's saying, as the king really, really um, degrades Esther by taking more women after he chose her, well, someone else is rising. In other words, you have to see it like this. Mordechai is moving up. Yoshev Bishar HaMelech. Before that, we know he lives in the city of Shushan, now but now he's at the gate. The Shar HaMelech is close already. Suddenly, you know, there's a statement, the king is degrading, but Mordechai is rising. In other words, the power that, that the king wants to push down from another place is coming up. Okay, Esther's real power, and that's why it says right after this, ah, Esther was loyal to Mordechai. Okay, it says, Esther, continue to not say where she's from. She's keeping Mordechai's, but then it goes on twice, right? Every, look, look what it says in, in verse 20. Esther didn't say her nation and her, her, her homeland as Mordechai commanded her. Ve'et Mordechai, et ma'amar Mordechai, Esther osa. What, well, you just said what he told her. What's, et, what's this second ma'amar as Mordechai, Esther osa? You just, mama, uh, you know, it says, uh, look, at the, look at the verse in English. Get, read me the English. Read me the English here. I, I think so, but I think it's also showing that Mordechai's power is still here. The king wants to push it down, but the, the Megillah is saying she's still his. It's still happening. But, but read, read me verse 20 in English, please. Someone? Still, still, no, please, please. Sorry. Esther still told nothing of her kindred or of her people as Mordechai had instructed her. For Esther continued to obey Mordechai, just as when she was reared by him. So if it says she didn't say, like Mordechai told her, so why does it say, and she continued to do what he's, it's, it's sort of like redundant here, right? It's because she's a people pleaser. And therefore, therefore, she has to do what Mordechai. I, I, I agree that she's there, but she's not only a people, but it's also, be omna ito. Omna means. When she was under his auspices, in other words, Esther is a very loyal, very loyal to Mordechai, as we would appre- as we would assume. Uh, Shua says a people pleaser. She's loyal. She's loyal, and she was uh, well educated by Mordechai. But I think in, in this term, it's, it's nice to know that she's a good Jewish girl and continues doing what what her uncle said. But I think in this sense, it she is um, still part of Mordechai's power in that sense. The king wants to annul her, wants to turn her into nothing. She still has power, but where's her power now? It's not from herself. It's from her uncle. She's still drawing power, and he is rising. And we'll see that they will play off each other. They'll play together. They will make something very special out of this connection, as, again, Hashem always leaves a little bit of chance. Um, and that chance, sorry, a fool. Ashgacha happening in, in, in this crazy Persian Empire. Tov. Now we get to a really, really important part. And this one will explain very well. Um, and it's great to end with this. We'll be able to begin next week with Paragimel and Mir Haman. Um, just these very short verses that we understand it in the full scope of the Megillah, but we're going to understand it in the political sense of the Megillah in two different, two different directions. One positive, one really negative. But let's take a look. Very short parshia. For, always forgot. People don't really relate to it when you tell the major story of the Megillah. But and it's, the Megillah is very, it's very compact. In other words, we asked about Parak Aleph. What's it doing there? So we sort of gave an answer. From Parak Gimel. The story is going to be super compact. It's Esther, Mordechai, Haman. Nothing goes out of that. Of, uh, and, and Achashverosh. Nothing goes out of it. But here, these two psukim suddenly, three psukim suddenly, tell us sort of something else. Let's take a look here. In those days, Mordechai was sitting in the, in the, in the king's gate. Again, I remind you, the Shevet Bashar HaMelech means a high political position. Katsaf Bigtan Vateresh. Um, Bigtan and Teresh were angered. Shnei Sarisei Amelech Mishomrei Asaf. 
the, the, the guards, his personal guards, and they, want, they attempt to assassinate him. Mordechai hears this. And he tells Esther, and Esther says to the king in Mordechai's name, it's looked into subtly, and it's found that it is correct, this piece of information, and they are both hung on a tree. And it's recorded in the king's chronicles. And the rabbi mentions that these, these psukim are sort of to the side, they're not they're very much, in, very relevant to the previous statement, and that this is a display of her loyalty to Mordechai. Very good. Of her loyalty to the wrong thing, and also... She's literally working for him. And also, I mean, she's, she's like a mole. Uh, uh, informer. What do you want to call well, her? she's not informer. She doesn't. Mordechai finds so, out about it. Right, right. But 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 she's connected to him and in, in his power. But but well, let's let's look at Mordechai for a second, okay? Because Mordechai here is the, is the hero in a sense. Esther just gives over his words. Listen, Achashverosh is nobody's favorite king, okay? He's he's uh, he's 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 not so simple, Achashverosh. He is um, erratic, power hungry to the utmost degree. Um, pretty, pretty, he'll do whatever he needs to get what he, he needs to be done. And suddenly, you, a Jew in Shushan, through, well, we'll talk about it in a second, through wheeling and dealings in politics, you hear a rumor. You hear a rumor about a plot to kill the king. What do you do? You know what? I mean, this guy is dangerous. Maybe we should just, you know, be quiet. No, yeah, and let the these first... people do it instead. Yeah. And let what? And let these people be in charge instead. So no, they wouldn't be in charge. The human reaction would be to keep then, quiet. Because if you say something, they're going to tie you to it. Ah. Uh, one second. Not only that. One second. If... You know? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're coming to me and telling me that there's someone trying to kill me? You're an immediate suspect. Possibly, what Shmuel is saying is also. And also, what happens if you're too late and they kill the king? Where does that put you? You're an ally. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, you're out, you're gone. Mordechai here stumbles upon a really, really dynamic piece of news. And he has to make a choice what he's doing. But really he doesn't. Because his choice was already made. Yeah, because Esther's already been chosen. The moment uh, they're in. Mordechai. They're in. That's they're it. Seen. Exactly. What Yosef yeah, says is exactly. Exactly. What so the, 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 Mordechai, in this sense, has already put his chips on the table. He's shown his colors. But it's not even that. It's what happens if um, I kill the king and someone else takes over. It was even worse. What happens to Esther? Right. That, that's not, what that. no, not a lack of power. Just for yeah. Oh, for, well, for sure. For sure. She could be killed or, or send off. To, so like, right. Exactly. Sort of what, what? That Mordechai already has made his choice. He, in a sense, he can't back down from here already. He's made the choice for Esther. Even though in, at the time it's, it's 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 still risky, it's still a risk a what sense, he's doing. In a sense, Mordechai is actually more jail than she is. More. He's more. She's more entrapped. Mordechai. Talk about this being an, you know people who are entrapped because he plays cards, and the fact is he's not liable for the woman he put into this. To, I, I agree. You know, he's already he's already on a track yes, here. It's a self preservation. He's a track here, but but he he, he makes the call. He says, listen. I'm going to try to do this. I am now there, and I want, I want this, uh, I want this to work. I'm going to tell the king something. Now, just, just this is an important idea in politics. You never know in politics, and I'm not really a politician, so I'm actually really bad at these things. But the people, the people who do know about politics, say that in politics you shoot in a million different directions. You never put all your eggs in one basket, even though now he's sort of co coerced into a certain kibun. But you always keep trying to do favors for people because you never know if the favor you did for him now is going to play in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. The guy you helped out, gave a, a foot up, a step up, when he was just this young little guy, in 15 years he may be the one of the, the president of the United States of America. And, and, and where are you then? Real politicians, that's how they think. They really think, that's why they go out and, right, they, and, they, and they shake your hand. What in the world does it matter that you shook this guy's hand? 
Because what do you feel to that? You feel a connection to that person. Remember, remember. You feel, ah, ah, oh, he's the guy. I shook his hand in the shook, right? What does that mean? Why in the world should you choose him? What does that have to do with anything? It works. All these little things work. And I went to a demonstration for women's rights, for men's rights, for them's rights, for anyone. Anyone. You can go to everything. Go to as much as you can. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're being out there. That's why it says there's no bad publicity, right? They said uh, people, uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Publicity is publicity. There's no such thing as bad publicity. There's a statement that was said in the past. Once you're there, people see you. They know who you are. That's the only thing that you need. Because once someone knows who you are, it's automatically good. But this is, in politics, you're, you're going all over the place. You're trying to put little pieces into it. Esther's in. Esther is in. Okay, Esther's in. We don't know what it's going to mean. It may mean nothing for the Jews. We don't know. But Esther's in. That's one move. I'm going to save the king. It's another move. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should have. Probably I should have now that Esther's there. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. Let's keep it rolling. Mordechai throws. And he does this event and he saves the king. And as you guys know or don't know, the whole Purim story is going to happen five years in the future. And it's all yeah, it says, Mordecai, as it says, that's... Achar, 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 After these things right. happened, and it doesn't give a specific time, I heard it happened like two no. years after. Well, well we, we're going to know that it's going to say, We're going to see, it's going to yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, oh, Very good. And I would say more so, Hachacham, the politics, Yotzer Tanolad. He creates the Nolad. You try. You send out a million different ways, and so in, in some way, it's, it may tie in. This will tie into that. It will tie into this. This is how politics is. This is how Mordechai is thinking. Now, Mordechai is in the political world now. For a while. He's in rumors. Well, he got a higher, he's in a higher place now, but already, but he is fully invested in the person. How did Mordechai know what's going on here? How did Mordechai and anyone else? So Chazal say, Chazal say. Maybe they didn't want to, and he. Sure, you, you, you are, you are, you are. No, you know Akash Rera. He comes from Los Angeles. He reads movie scripts the whole day. I, I, I. I, 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 you're, you're, you're three steps ahead of me. I, I did not think of that. The two, the two ministers. Yeah, okay. I, it's, it's way, way ahead of me. You may, it may be right, but. It's a bomb But I, yeah. No, but let's, let's, let's not go there, Shua. Okay, I mean, I can't say you're wrong, but, but, but. But let's let's continue here for a second. But Mordechai's already set some bad. connections just yeah. when Esther was already in the process of being selected because he was constantly checking on her day after day. So he was making connections here, he was making connections. For sure. He was so he's in. He's in. Chazal said, I'm just going to say, Chazal say he spoke 70 languages. And that's what he's part of the Sanhedrin. Mordechai was from the Sanhedrin. So he knew 70 languages. So he, and it says they were talking in a language that like no one knows. And then, and uh, Tarshim, what? I have no idea what it is. I don't know if we even know what it is. If we really know what it is. One second, Ezra. And, and, and he was talking in 70, and, but I think what Chazal are hinting at, okay, now I'm being careful, okay? It could, they could have been shot that he was really from the Sanhedrin and he knew all the 70 languages. But I think what they're saying is exactly what we were saying before. Mordechai is someone who knows a lot. He speaks the languages. He knows the talk. He knows what's happening. It is invested in it. He's learned it. It's part of who he is. He is someone who speaks 70 languages. That, that statement is, is important. Because who else, Chazal say, spoke 70 languages? Moshe. No. Moshe. No, Yosef. Uh, Yosef, remember that there's a very uh, famous at midrash Paro, yeah, at Paro, yeah, yeah, yeah. 70 steps, each step is a language. I don't know if you guys know the midrash, it's a special of a midrash, yeah, but it's yeah. really cool. And you're like, ooh, yeah, Yosef. Yeah. Well, what else do we know about Yosef and Mordechai? Oh, two leaders in Galut, not in, in exile, oh, moving ahead, become second to the king, just like yeah. Mordechai becomes second to the king. Yeah. Yosef is Mishnah Lamelech. Whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Yosef also. What was, why is Yosef brought up and why does he succeed in every place he is? Because he's an opportunist. Because? Ibrahim. No. Why is he every place he succeeds? 
Think of Esther and Yosef's eyes. Exactly. Not only, per, but, but again, in the, in the more positive way, I, people please I think is not positive. Chen. First of all, we'll say Chen. It says about Yosef also. And he helps, he helps the person in charge. Potiphar, he's completely for him. The Sar Beit the, 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 the guy in the, in, the, in the jail, he takes care of the whole jail. Paro, he doesn't just come to say Paro and says, this is your dream. He says, now, Paro, look what you should do. That's what grabs Paro. He says, this person is looking for my best interests. Wow, that's like Esther, what we said before. This is the deep lesson she got from Mordechai. This is what Mordechai is going to do to the king now already. He is looking for his best interest. This will play in five years, that night when the king can't sleep, and he suddenly says, who, who has my best interest in heart? Find me someone, because I'm completely not clear anymore after Esther manages to do what she does, well, as we learn, we'll learn. But, and he finds Mordechai, this guy, no connection to the king, you know, one of the people, and he put his life on the line to save me. He, out of everyone, he told me, wow, wow, what do we do for this guy? And I'll explain a bit more when we get there. But this is Mordechai and Esther. These are the people who are, put their loyalty to the king and they're willing to say it. They are very valuable. Now, Big Tan and Teresh are another trauma for the king. Can we make a cash, additional cash with Yosef? Um, all of them paraded him around to give him more, to give the people more confidence to, to love him and say, no, 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 even though he's this Judas Ivri, he's still with me. So they paraded him around, put him off. So too here we find out with Esther with the taxes. So and Mordechai, who they're really going to parade him around on a horse. Ah. No, no, Mamash, like Mamash a parade. There it's a Merkava. This is a horse with clothes. They say they oh, raise the king's king. Uh, it's very, very clear that there's a very serious connection here in the stories. We said, we mentioned it, we'll mention it again and again. But, but correct, also that, also possibly what you said. It's a good point. I didn't think about the, the presence, but yes. But one second, let's go back here to our story so we could finish Big Town and Teresh and move on to chapter 3 uh, on Sunday. So Big Town and Teresh. What it really does, though, is it shocks the king. Now, we have to understand, Big Tan and Cherish are two eunuchs. What do they think? They're going to kill the king and become king? What in the world do they think? Be, 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 be real people, real politic, political people. Were they the masterminds, you think, behind this thing? No, Mordechai was. <laughs> they, they, they were obviously just, just the assassins. They're just, they're the ones who can put the poison in the king's drink. They aren't the people here. But if they aren't, then who is? And this hits the king in the gut. The king says, I was open. I had a lot of advisors, a lot of people around me talking, saying, hearing. Where has this brought me? I don't know. I'm looking at you. Was it you? Was it you? Was it you? Who is? Amen. Mordechai. That's right. Um, I think his Mordechai is a lower level. That's why I think at the moment. But but he's looking around, and, and suddenly, what does he lose? Trust. Trust. Control. <laughs> I thought I'm in charge of this whole thing, and suddenly there are plots all around here. And I don't know who it is. Maybe they, Vashti, the right, and maybe it's Vashti <laughs> from her place. It may, whatever, whatever it is, suddenly the king, again, this is Vashti all over again, in a different way, in a different terms. Again, someone's trying to rest away from the people who are so close to me. No, how could this be? The trauma of the king. So Mordechai, saves the king's life, but the king is completely traumatized once again. What does a traumatized king do? Well, he was very, pretty, pretty strong he's what he did last serious. time. What's he going to do this time? So he's going to do this time. We'll see next chapter. He's going to bring someone Amen. who Amen. has no nation and no political power raise him up above everyone else, push everyone else down and say, you now, sir, 
are the only one who's in charge. You guys remember the very beginning, in the first lesson of the Megillah, we talked about the two options of empire? Mm -hmm. Limited well, and... Uh, no, that was the Malbim. We called yeah. it different. We called it Russia and America. Uh, but, and what did he choose to do? America. Russia. That's about to flip. It didn't work. Without. It didn't work, the America Shita. Yeah. He's, he's, the, he's, pleasing, the, pleasing doesn't the pleasing doesn't work. People are trying to attempt. They're trying to assassinate me. We're done. I'm going to choose someone. Chazal say he was a barber. Why do you think he was a barber? A barber has a razor that he puts on people's necks. And he, this is Haman. He says, I want someone who will have a, ne a, a, a knife to the neck of the empire. This is who I'm choosing. And that's why it's going to say, Achar advarim ha'ele, Gidel HaMelech HaTaman. After these things, Bigtan and Teresh, mm. the king says, Stop! I tried to assert control through the American method. Didn't work. Hang on, you're, <laughs> you're messing up the timeline. Let's do it. Like, I mean, here you're saying that uh, after Bigtan and Teresh uh, happened, now he's raising up uh, Haman. The, now, Haman we know was already in the king's seat. No, he doesn't raise him. He takes him. Already by the first party. From the Mukhan. That's the Midrash, okay? No, no. no, but he, no, he picks someone, and he then he starts to... No, but it doesn't mean he picks a no-name. He was around. Yeah. Oh. Mean, uh, Haman Hagagi was saying bye with the, all the princes. But they say he was listed Haman seven. Was... No, no, one second. Well, well first of all, we're, we're mixing Midrash and, and Pshat, okay? Right? It, it doesn't say Haman in, in, in chapter 1. Mm -hmm. It's, no, 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 no. It's only going to say Agagi here. Now, in chapter 3. But we hold that he's someone. One second. The, the Midrash, we explain. Do you guys remember why, when we learned that, we explained oh, yeah. why why Memuchan. You're talking about Memuchan, right? Yeah. Memuchan in chapter 1. Because he over relaxed to kill everyone. That's why we say Chazal equated them. But we have not met Haman. In the Pshat of the Megillah, we haven't met Haman. I, mean, I, I, I told you guys, I'm cheating. I'm going, sometimes I use the Pshat, sometimes I use the Drash. But I'm trying to give you guys a, re, a, a certain reading. Okay? We have not met Haman yet. He's actually not even one of the king's advisors. We don't know what he is, Bichlal. He is a nobody. But where do we see people bring nobodies and make them suddenly really powerful? Who else? No, Paro, Paro to Paro. Yosef. Paro. Paro takes Yosef and pulls him up in front of everyone. And then what does Yosef do? All the dirty work. But that was a stop. He was a, told him no. to be already. All the dirty work Yosef is going to do. And then, and then, I don't know. When they come to him, these people come to him and say, we have no food. They go, I don't know, go to Yosef. Buys them, buys their lands, buys their free, buys everything. Oh, it's on me, it's Yosef. It's Yosef. It's Yosef. The king's going to bring this guy up. And say he is in charge. That was complete loyalty to me because he has no power. Paro, this Paro, Paro loves Yosef. Yosef is perfect. He's a genius. He wants to do everything for the king, but he has no power. Yosef is nobody in nobody. He's, he's, he's Esther. He is a nobody from nowhere. He's going to be Haman also in that sense. Haman, Yosef is the, 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 the picture of both Esther and Haman. Both of them. Very good. Nachon, Nachon. There are a lot of a lot of things keys Rabbi, here. According to your according to your explanation about like why he like picked Haman is um, wouldn't make sense why Memuchan would be Haman because a remove a he wouldn't be an advisor. B he probably wouldn't pick Memuchan at all in the first place just because Memuchan had power in the first place. I believe. So if he actually picked Memuchan, he will be giving him more power than he had before. I think so. I think you're correct. You know, I, I, I wouldn't say. I would say it makes sense it's probably not Memuchan. It's probably, right. He would pick a random person and get rid of everyone else just so he says, I have full power, nobody can do anything about it. Then he probably picks someone who's not his advisors to go and fire all of his advisors and pick a random person and he just happened to pick a barber exactly. because of that reason. So, so Ezra, that's the way I want to explain it. And what Ezra said now, I'll give you another key fascinating point in the Megillah that I've seen from Chazoni and never seen anyone else. From this point on, the minute Haman comes into Paragimel, we're not going to hear the name of any other advisor or any one part of the government until Harvona. In in, 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 in in chapter 7, suddenly he's going to say, oh, there's a gallows. As opposed to chapter 1 and 2, where we have the eunuchs and the names and the seven people who saw, the seven, lots and lots of people. And suddenly, no one. 
For all the chapters of Haman, nobody except Haman. This is a total, totalitarian government that has flipped. So in a sense, guys, this is fascinating, Mordechai brought this on the Jews. Mm. How did he do it? Not, right. not, not, and it's a, it's a funny statement. Words, he attempted to save the king. Well, he did save the king, but he triggered the oh, king's paranoia. Mm. And not, a, not on purpose, but you, because you never know. Right? Everything is always much more complex than any one person can yeah. see. He had saved the king, but he triggered his paranoia, and the paranoia turned him to flip the other way. We're going to see this a lot next Bezrat Hashem on Sunday, where we meet Haman in his... Uh, the great Haman. The, the great Haman. Tov. Shel Tov.